Potholes and Penguins with Barry and Trimby. I don't have the energy to start this week, let's <laughs> someone, someone else move my lips for me. I've, I've been, been thinking like, about you. I've been I have been thinking about you a lot this weekend. Um I was gonna call you and I just wanted to keep our powder dry so that ah, you would save save it for the show. I, but you've I, got I, nothing left by the signs of it. You, Dermy, you could use me as a ventriloquist here. <laughs> <Dermy>. <laughs> just do the whole show uh, and I'll just move my mouth. And you look like one of those bollocks lads in Pearl Harbor with the headband on as well. <laughs> 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 <Just> be, <laughs> be covering a half of your eye. Yeah, do you ever notice those films like they must be bollocks by the end of those three day big like no one goes to sleep when Pearl Harbor happens. Do you know the bombs start they're trying to save each other. After two days of it, you'd be wrecked. Yes, you would be. You'd be, be fight or flight, though. You'd just be. Basically, I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm going through what the lads in Pearl Harbor went through right now. Do you think your body has has gone into the fight or flight moment where it's like, just keep going, don't know, just keep going. I don't know. Ah. Uh, flight, I would say, or die, <laughs> just die, <laughs> fight or die. <laughs> Have you <laughs> ran the die. whole time? I just, uh, I had to get Mick the granddad uh, to drive me out here to Dermy's, uh, to the studio, because um, I couldn't, I couldn't trust myself to drive. And Just uh, in a truck, and then he just like lifted it up <laughs> and emptied it, and you just slid out into Dermy's. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me. Uh, yeah, so he drove me out, and we did the four o'clock one here, and I had to walk it, and that's the first walk I've done. So I'm 40 miles in. And I run, I walked walked the last four miles, and I'm not embarrassed about the last walk, and and I struggled to walk it, which is the most hor- horrifying part. Mm. So I have oh, two geez. more left. I have eight more miles to do at eight o'clock and twelve o'clock, and I'm going to try and run them. Uh, now, when I say run, it's probably slower than a walk, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like a run. Moving so I backwards, sh- <laughs> and I shuffle my shoulders from side to side, <laughs> and try and lift my knees, but my legs are gone. Legs are just gone. Do you remember um, Mr. What, do you, what do you call the, the guy Tom, the, the military guy who raised money for the NHS who died there? He was like walking up his garden in a Zimmer frame. I'm just imagining that's, that's yeah. going to be you come midnight. Do you, have, you don't have to do the midnight one though because you started at midnight on Friday. No, I started at 4 a.m. on Friday, uh, on Saturday morning. Mm. So I finish at... At twelve tonight, or it's it's taken me forty five minutes to do them now. So I'll finish at quarter to one. Who who was involved with your running? So, very luckily, I a friend of mine called Scott Murphy, not <laughs> not, not the cat, not the cat, <laughs> uh, a, a friend of mine who's named uh, at the same as the cat oh. and just as lovable. He is a physiotherapist uh, extraordinaire. He's oh, a, the Scottish fella. He's Australian. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Scott is his name. Scott's his name. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was something about him. <laughs> well, You're Ozzie, thinking the of Australia guy. Murphy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Scottish guy. <laughs> Two seconds. Uh, Trimby, can you just track your gain? Yeah. It's a little bit ha. Yeah, it is a wee bit. Yeah. I don't know who. I think. I think someone sneaks into my house and just <laughs> turns that up from half eleven to twelve. <laughs> Every, every weekend just to piss you off the gain varies <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, Scott Murphy Scott Murphy is a physiotherapist used to work with Monster back in the day um, he's from Sydney he is a great fella he's worked very closely with the Irish boxers Irish swimming Olympic team Irish boxing Olympic team for the last 10 years and he now uh, works with a professional cycling team Trimby I don't know what they're called but they're one of the biggest in the world he is any of us I couldn't tell you he uh, he's very experienced, very sound. So he came on board just yesterday. He's the kind of fellow now. He wrote, he's only run one marathon in his life, and he ran it just. He decided to do it the day before uh, wow. with two of his mates, and he nearly died doing it because he was so unprepared. But he doesn't just didn't give a fuck. So he said, "Yeah, I'll fucking do it with you." So he's doing it, but he's been grand. He's getting through it, and he's motivating me so much. He's like facilitating me to do it. So he's done it all with me, and he's. It's just encouraging. He's trying to distract me from obviously he doesn't really want to talk about the actual process of what we're doing. We're trying not to talk about it all at all. So we just do it. And I've had a couple of people join us along the way. So I've done a few on my own. 
uh, most of it with him and then my brother joined me for one and Ronan O'Mahony former Munster winger oh yeah Mank joined me this morning yes man which was great gave me a burst of energy there yeah Yeah. 8 o'clock this morning just just when I needed I was it was tough getting out of bed now this morning after two hours sleep and going at it again. It's, uh, yeah, but it's tough. My legs are broken. Feet swollen up to the nines. Um, blisters. They feel like they're just in bits. Heels and shins. Knees are swollen. Uh, hips are fucked. Uh, back is kind of gone. My shoulders are all now aching and tight because I'm kind of... Eh. Oh. I don't know how people do this stuff all the time. Do you know these ultra runs and dub, some people be doing double marathons and marathons in every day of the week and crack like that. But loads of people have done it. Loads of our penguins have done it. Loads of them. <laughs> yeah. It's been hilarious because they're getting on to me going like, I'm never listening to your show again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> have you done to us? Yeah. Uh, I, have to give a, I have to give a shout out to a few of them. Uh, Evan Prendergast, who uh, uh, is doing it in Limerick as well. He's, He's wearing been, bandages, uh, not on his head, but on his knee now, they look yeah. sore. He keeps saying his knees are like dushed, <laughs> which is very uh, dushed. accurate. Uh, Kieran O'Connor, who's doing it out here. Oh, yes. Uh, and Orla McAuliffe, who's guess, she's recording the whole thing on her Instagram and just having a laugh at it. And she managed to finish it, legend, earlier on today. Her friend Ashley Doherty, unfortunately didn't quite make it <laughs> she didn't quite make it <laughs> <laughs> she's still alive <laughs> I just imagine when she was saying I didn't I didn't make it I, I'm deceased I imagined like her her like the horse uh, that your man was sitting above on and her friend sitting up with her giving the peace sign oh yeah what's his name Georgie Elliot Gordon Elliot I was also on one of my runs today I was I was listening to someone to on I think it was off the ball talking about Billy Holland and how he, he bowed out at the right time Yes, he could have um, gone on for another few years. It wouldn't have been his decision. He yeah. could have been flogged. Yeah, and I was, literally. I was imagining him as the dead horse <laughs> <laughs> with Van Grand sitting up on his back, <laughs> <laughs> tearing up his contract, giving the peace sign. Imagine if you if you brought brought Billy Holland out to stud, and he just lived out in Castle Troy, and he was just a stud farm monster. If people wanted surrogate monster rugby players. He'd be more of a fluffer, I'd say, though, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> like a sexy show pony. <laughs> <laughs> the Stahl, Stahlworth. The Stahlworth fluffer. <laughs> Gets them all horny. <laughs> the mares. Uh, yeah, so I'm grand. I'm, I'm getting through it. Fan grand. Fair play to me, huh? Absolutely, fair play to you. I, I yeah, I've been I've been thinking about you a lot, and I I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't want to get get in touch because I wanted to see. I just wanted to like, talk to you like, towards the end. It's such a, it's you're 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 just turning the corner at Shams Elise. Like you're just it's the final <laughs> straight, and you're nearly there. Exactly. And yeah, exactly. Mm. I just it, it, I spoke to a fella a while back who's done a load of these kind of these types of events, and um, he says there's a real downer afterwards because there's a wee bit of a build up to it maybe i know it's not a massive event with loads of other people involved but he said there's a real downer for a day oh, or two afterwards no. yeah, I, yeah i would i would imagine so because there's no real sense of achievement at the end of this i'll be running back into my house in a state at 12 o'clock tonight there would be no one there yeah and the kids the, the twins would be screaming and you'd yeah. be straight back to or um, or be in a worse state than i am because she's had two days of them on her own <laughs> 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 she looks like she's been doing the ultra runs uh, so she's I just keep coming into the house and going I'm doing this for you I'm doing this for ye I'm not doing this for me <laughs> she's just so pissed off at me just did because um, I've kind of left her on her own but yeah I I understand that I, I, I'm expecting not that I wanted to achieve anything out of this I just said fucking might as well do something but it is it's uh, it's probably I'd imagine it's character building your um, it's it's incredible. It's a, it's a big achievement. What you're doing is great. And uh, I did have a moment last night whenever I came in after the game, and I had a a 12 inch double cheese double pepperoni pizza and I had, like a couple of glasses of wine. I was just sitting there like a slob watching TV. <laughs> Could there be more of a contrast from how Barry's weekend has been? Uh, ah, well, the, one of the best parts for me about the whole thing has been the the diet. I've been on. Uh, so one of our penguins, uh, absolute legend, got on to me and 
Uh, he's a Matthew Hooks is his name. He's a nutritionist, Matthew Hooks Nutrition. You'll find him on Instagram. And he basically designed an entire nutrition plan for me every day uh, for every run, before every run. So I am constantly eating jelly babies and fruit and bagels and lucasid and uh, <laughs> chicken wraps. Sounds like my uh, diet all the time. I know but it sounds <laughs> like what But it's kids. non-stop. I think I've put on weight. It's like <laughs> non-stop eating because y- you need the fuel and the farting. <laughs> sounds like my diet all the time. <laughs> I like the stats I'm putting up on the farting over the course of a, of a, of a run. Like I'm doing 40, I've done 40 miles in 40 hours. 40 farts. I definitely thought you were going to. No, no. Yeah, I'm I'm getting there. I've done, (laughs) for each run, I'd say 50 plus farts. Maybe, I'd say on average 60, let's say, farts a run. And then in between, (laughs) but for the three hours off, at least 10 or 15 an hour. All right, Jesus, they're not. So something you're eating is violently affecting your gut like or just the amount of running i'm doing the amount of movement is is uh because it's compressing because it's when i'm running i'm getting more of them and it's I, just, I i don't it's like a jet propelled around the place <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't I think we've done yet. um this uh, nutritionist that you were um promoting <laughs> i don't think we've done done him any favors <laughs> sorry I, I, <laughs> he may have told me to not go as heavy on the jelly beans and stuff and i i can't you buy two bags of jelly beans and he says a handful I'm going with Dennis Leamy sized handfuls <laughs> <laughs> or every run. Uh, yes, yeah, Leamy's far. enormous hands. Leamy holds a pint glass and it looks like a shot glass. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> yeah, it's shaking his hand. You feel like it's a child, <laughs> child's hand. Um, so, yeah, the farts. I haven't shat myself yet. I feel like. Could be a slippery slope. Could be like I'm, Dermy's after giving me a hot a whiskey <laughs> in my coffee and a can of beer, and I'm so I'm going to be nicely oiled for the next one. Yeah, and then I'm definitely going to have a few cans in the in between the second last one and the last one, and then have a few cans after. So I might shit myself, but you're all the best, dude. And they uh, Radcliffe, Paula yeah. Radcliffe, took a shit on the side of the road, and she went on to win the marathon, didn't she? Was that the Olympics? She. I can't confirm or deny that one. No, but it just shows you. It just shows you. No matter what you accomplished, what was she? She she won gold medals. A number she of marathons. That, she finished the. She won at that time. Yeah, she shot. But everybody remembers the time she shit herself. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah, Sonia Sullivan. I don't think she she had a poor a poor reform when she shot herself. It was um, she didn't win. Uh, didn't Gary Lineker shit in the 1990 World Cup? Oh, he did, yeah. On the ground, and then like dragged his arse around the grass like his uh, like a dog. <laughs> that's, that's a great story about that, yeah. Is there? Yeah, yeah. People are staying away from him on the pitch. Now, <laughs> <laughs> where would be the where would be the worst place to shit yourself if you your profession? Like I've heard musicians shitting themselves, which would be grand because you're on stage on your own. Oh yeah, the Red Hot Chili Peppers did one of them wear a nappy on stage because he had an awful dose of the runs because they were playing Glastonbury or some huge festival and he just needed to get through a 40 minute gig. Yeah, so if you think, you'd, you'd automatically think that would be the worst place to shit yourself. Like a priest, if a priest shot himself, <laughs> you'd think that's the worst thing. Holy he's, shit. <laughs> 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 but he's be grand standing up there, uh, no one really need him, and then he just lash out way more incense. <laughs> more, <laughs> more incense. <laughs> Uh, to find away the shit, an air hostess maybe an air an air where are they called now cabin crew. It'd be a terrible place to shit yourself. To it, plenty of jacks around the place though to run to. Or just on a plane in general. Oh no, uh, that that beer is pink as well, so that's probably the worst, <laughs> the worst choice. Oh, of was all. that the is that the beetroot one? Yeah, we went for the beetroot one today. It's beat, great, isn't it? Beet on the breath on the brat. Tastes exactly like beetroot. Exactly <laughs> like beetroot. It's full on pink. Oh, yeah, I'm on uh, Im- Imbongito. Oh, that would be good now. It would be good for me. <laughs> nice and fresh. Jeez, I iced my feet earlier on. That's an awful experience. Have you done that? Uh, I don't know. Just into a bucket of ice. Water as well. 
Yeah, and then I, I got a life hack where I put a rubber glove on my feet. After a while, I looked it up. I was like, how long do you keep your feet in ice for? Because I couldn't land last 30 seconds. It was like, stick a rubber glove on. I could manage 10 minutes then, but it was awful. Uh, oh, the rubber glove is to, is to take away the sensation on the skin. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I, I think it's to save it, your toes. Your toes are what makes your foot. Yeah. Get frostbit. <laughs> yeah. I actually wouldn't be long getting frostbit. <laughs> frostbit. Um, How are you, Trimby? <laughs> yeah, I'm Let's good. That, I'm good. It's um. Any news on the patio? Oh, the patio's done. I keep. I've took a couple of pictures and I just keep forgetting to put them in. The patio's done. 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 Yeah, it's well, finished. It's Actually, it finished like a while back or on Monday it was. Well done. Yeah. That's, it looks great. Now that's <laughs> looks a sense. That's a sense of achievement right there. Yeah, and I got a diner the next day as well. <laughs> <laughs> He needs to have something to show no. for it. <laughs> I just have swollen feet to show for mine. I don't have a fucking patio. <laughs> you're, probably, um, you're not ripped, no? You're not more ripped after the weekend, no? No. Uh, emaciated, but... Uh, <laughs> but uh, feeble looking. Do you know the way you'd be? Mm. I, l- I look like a, a prisoner from the Renaissance. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Prison from the Renaissance. Very arty. That's what I, that's what I feel Give like. me a pen and I will paint you the most incredible drawing. But you know the way they maybe hose down or wash a prisoner? <laughs> when I wash myself after <laughs> the run, the power <laughs> I'm so dishevelled when I'm in the shower. I'm just like, ah, oh, ah. Yeah. my feet, I'm all battered and sore, like I've been chained to a wall for <laughs> months. <laughs> uh, but look. It was great. So shout out to all my co-runners and to, uh, that have done it around the country. Fair play to and the runners that ran with me. Pam Maroney, Scott Murphy, Brian Murphy, and Ronan Amani. Uh, Trimby, have you, have you seen a little bit before we've got loads of rugby to talk about? We've got yeah. the Interpros, which I watched at the weekend in between the runs, and then... Uh, got next weekend to look forward to loads of contract stuff as well we can dive into but give us an old silly little bit it's trying to be silly silly little bit in my former life my game night routine was to listen to the wonder years on route to ravenhill the Wonder Years was a BBC Radio 1 production. I doubt either of you two rebel synthetic Bowron skin bashers <laughs> will be familiar with the reference. <laughs> the Wonder Years. <laughs> <laughs> it featured throwback music from the likes of Nirvana, Snow Patrol, Beastie Boys and The Prodigy. It also featured JLS and TLC, but you can't win them all. Jealous. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. En route, the commentator of the game, thinking about the Wonder Years, led me to reminisce about previous game night commutes. I'm so fond of nostalgia, I became nostalgic about nostalgia itself. Interesting. I then proceeded to follow the career long series of emotions when Ulster play Leinster. Phase one. <laughs> Get excited about the potential of tonight becoming the night that we turn things around and Irish rugby experiences a significant sea change. (laughs) Phase 2, starting strongly, my naivety grows and takes hold. Phase 3, Ulster get dicked. (laughs) (laughs) And we wonder where it all went wrong. (laughs) Afterwards, I wonder how we didn't see it coming, much like when Marilyn Manson got accused of sexual misconduct. In hindsight... It shouldn't come as a surprise to any of us. (laughs) This weekend's my daughter's fourth birthday, and Molly, being the middle child, requires about as much attention on her birthday as Frank Murphy requires on game night. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Molly, I know it's your birthday, but this weekend's all about Frank. (laughs) En route home from the game, I continued my tradition of stopping for a pizza. Despite... Uh, Game night becoming much less taxing for me these days, not burning any calories whatsoever, just standing in the cold for two hours. Double pepperoni and extra cheese, please. (laughs) Sorry. Ah, It's a a, a bit of a dramatic ending. Weird weird finish. Yeah. Uh, So, Frank, I know you're going to pick up on that. Ah, yeah. So much to unpack from that. 
The uh, the Wander Years. Mm. <laughs> BBC who hosted that? This that is, was um, oh, was that a Scott. radio? Was that a radio show? Yeah, Scott show? Mills. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, running every is still going. No, it's not. It's fi- it's finished up, um, and it wasn't that long. I just remember there was about maybe for a couple of seasons my commute from where I was living, whatever time we were meeting for game night, it was mm-hmm. always on. And I know Barry. I know you love nostalgia, mm. Dermy. I assume you're the same. Yeah. Um, and we're um, I, we all are. We talked about this actually last on the Patreon episode. Mm. Yeah. With that kind of tapping into that nostalgia and how powerful that is. I love that in game night. Um, mm, listening yes. to songs, you don't realize you're like, I know every word to this song. I love this. And you listen and you 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 paint, you you create scenes in your brain when you're listening to the songs. Yeah. You get emotional and you use it as some sort of. So the uh, so- the songs are making you comfortable and putting you in a in a good frame of mind. Yeah, I actually remember the it not working. Playing, uh, I think we might have been playing Australia for months. To, for I think we might have been Ireland A versus Australia in Thome Park. Maybe it was, no, do you know what it was? It was Munster versus Australia in Thome Park. It was my last season, and I was uh, on the bench. And Awake My Soul, maybe by Mumford and Sons had just come on. Uh, no, After the Storm, oh, yeah. After the Storm, yeah. and uh. Quite an emotional song and very. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was a bit of a storm that night. It was fucking freezing. I remember a lot of the Australian lads at the end of the match had to be wrapped in tin foil. <laughs> <laughs> they had to be wrapped in tin foil. Ultra runners. Yeah. <laughs> like it was a bomb scare at the swimming pool. Wrapped in foil. Yeah, exactly. I went into the I went into the dressing room at the end of the game to swap my jersey, and they were all on the ground shaking and everyone was like trying, trying to get. Trying to check for their vital signs. And we were like, Jesus Christ. Um, but listening to that, that and it was getting me emotional and before getting the bus to the stadium. But I think it, it was depressing a little bit and it got me a bit too excited and a bit too uh, wound up. Whereas you need, maybe need, and I was, I was, I was painted a picture in my head. Mm. And I don't know, I don't know why that jumped to mind, but you, you need something that's relaxing, I would say, Andrew. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's maybe especially it, early on. Let's say okay, draw. So your one when you're, th- what's that? Two hours before the game. Yeah, you don't want to get that, excited yeah. then, because that's when you start. Do you remember when you used to get when you were naive and young and you get excited for games and you, at twelve o'clock and the match wasn't until five o'clock. Yeah, you'd have tears streaming down your face with yawning so much because you were so wound up about it and tired. Are you fucking yeah. yawning? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's not even a. So it's a it's a different. It's not like I'm like getting ready to play, like buzz or 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 motivation. It's just more of a. It's more of just an enjoyment. It's more of a like just yeah. like really just tapping into yeah. something, just making you happy. Um, yeah, so okay. I don't think it's quite excitement, like game night excitement yet. Mm. It's just a bit of a buzz, a bit of a happiness. Who, yeah, like what Nirvana song can you? What what pops to mind when he said when you think of him playing something that night? Um, probably something from um, Unplugged. Ooh, mm. yeah, lovely. What's your go-to on Unplugged? Um, one of the there's quite a lot of uh, neutral songs in Unplugged. Um, uh, yeah. I'd say um, I'd say um, that, that I because I, I never really listened to much in neutro. I just listened to unplugged and then kind of listened to in neutro afterwards. Okay, so they they seem like the originals for me. Hmm. Um, I uh, I loved uh, man who sold the world boy. Yeah, and uh, where did you sleep last night on a plane? What else is on it? Oh, I think that's one of my favorite albums of all time. Do you know I never oh, gave well. that a good whirl. I must. Go back and give that a good lash. And what's even better is his uh, his little comments in between the songs. Yeah. What are you tuning a harp? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this he, one was, that was ri- quite near the end, wasn't it? This he one was written after. by this one was written by the Vaselines. It's a rendition of an old Christian song, I think. We do it the <laughs> Vaselines way. <laughs> Jesus, don't want me for a sunbeam. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was near the end. Uh, be. Dave Grohl famously they had to calm him down and they gave him a set of hot rods you know those sticks that are like a bamboo stick which is like my boron oh. sticks and he famously said I was like 
I don't know what the fuck these things are. I used to fucking hit shit hard. <laughs> so he's there in the back, leathering the shit out of the the parts, like with the hot rods. But. Yeah, there is that kind of a snarey sound with the old bamboo thingies yeah, in there. Yeah, as opposed to what you'd normally imagine Nirvana being. Uh, yeah, yeah. I learned how to play the drums with hot rods um, because we I used to play in the the church band in Port Rush, and uh, and you could like you couldn't play with like proper sticks. Yeah. So I, 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 for like the first few years when I played the drums, or at the start when I played the drums, I thought that this is what you use. Yeah. I thought hot rods was what, what you played the drums with. <laughs> you only play the proper sticks when the, when the priest has shat himself. He <laughs> 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 needs to distract. Put out the sticks. <laughs> Grab the sticks. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Be with this moment. Play a, play a class in the bottom and see if priest shits himself. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then uh, Molly's f- uh, fourth birthday. Well, why are JLS throwing mm. in there with uh, with uh, Nirvana? Yeah, it's strange. It's strange. So I think the Wonder Years they're ju- they're not necessarily tapping tapping into a genre. They're just tapping into a a period of time. JLS were surely not ninety. Like I think uh, Unplugged in New York was ninety four. He died in ninety five. Oh, it was quite broad. Like they. There was more I I picked, so I looked it up to try and find out what I was listening to at the time. Remember, J, remember JLS were going to play Thomond Park a couple of years ago? Oh, yeah. Fuck me. And it, no one's, I think there was about six tickets sold. I was never so proud. There was a good, good few <laughs> other people bands in the city. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nah. Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's cool. That's so you're thinking you're going, and then, like the rest of us, you imagine the game, it just starts as we all hope. With mm. this phase one, <laughs> thinking this is going to be our night. Tommy was was drilling that uh, home on on air sport as well. He was so giddy and he really <laughs> he had that naivety. Yeah. Uh, they thought it was it was he was getting lippy and everything. He thought it was going to be the moment, but <laughs> and he did when it was twelve three. You were like, he's also looked incredible the first fifteen minutes, didn't he? That try, that balacoon try, which they made nothing of. The boys, like, uh, Robbo, as much as he loves Ulster, was like, great try there from Balakoon. Didn't even show a proper replay. Unbelievable try. Yeah, Holy crap, the whole phase of play. Um, and finish, and they just mm. have... What did you think of that? Because I was actually watching it going, I think me and Trimbier have, have, are, are in the, have swapped bodies. Or we, were lo- we were swapped at birth, whereas he should be supporting Munster and I should be supporting Ulster because I get so excited by Ulster's play and you don't seem to... Maybe it's just because you are so used to the what you're describing here, this, these three phases. Yeah, you're so yeah. used to it that you don't but get I'm so excited. used to it, but I, I still follow it to a T. I follow the exact Le- Ulster-Leinster uh, prescription. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and never have I learned. <laughs> oh, <laughs> into the pizza place. Okay. Never have I. Never have this I learned. Hang you on know, after it. phase one this and phase two <laughs> comes phase three. <laughs> Don't forget that. Uh, uh, so okay, and then and then Molly Molly wanted the attention. Uh, oh, Molly was hilarious. So um, <laughs> uh, I took I took Molly and Katie to the park today. So Katie's only twenty months. And uh, and she's obviously <laughs> she's she's tricky because she tr- she just her whole life she's been trying to keep up with the other two. So the third one just drags themselves up like they just do everything <laughs> and just just try and keep up. But because she she's dangerously confident with everything, then I have to try and keep an eye on her. But Molly, being the middle child and it being her birthday, she like she wanted attention. I was getting out of the car and she says. Uh, she says, Daddy, can you call me the birthday girl today? <laughs> <laughs> and then, just like Frank. <laughs> just like Frank. <laughs> can you call me the referee today? Can you call me Sir today, please? <laughs> Sir Frank. <laughs> well, but then um, I, I was bringing Katie over somewhere safe. And I was just moving away from Molly. And I think Molly thought that I was out of earshot. But Molly was at the top of the slide. And <laughs> I just heard her thinking nobody was listening, going, here comes the birthday girl <laughs> down the slide. <laughs> and you know what? Please get Matt McKnight to do a cartoon of Frank at the top of a slide. 
<laughs> Here comes the referee. <laughs> Sliding into into Raven's pan, <laughs> flashing his cards. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a yellow and red cards like a deck of cards, like, <laughs> 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 like like a dealer. Any card, any card. Like, <laughs> Blow my whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one white glove on, then just turn into like a with like a, a guy a, a raver in Ibiza dancing, <laughs> blowing his whistle. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. What kind of slide are we talking here? A, a twirly slide or a Well that slide? slide was a that slide was a straight slide, but um up to you, Matt. I, up to you. I, yeah, it's yeah, do what you want, Matt. <laughs> uh, but um Katie, I um I I knock Katie's com I'm saying she was confident. She's confident enough, but because she's the youngest, you just assume she's gonna be fine. So I am too confident in what she can do as well. She climbs up She's like that episode of Mr. Bean at the swimming pool, you know, bypassing <laughs> oh, all, yes, the lower, yes. all, all the lower, all the lower places to jump off and she goes straight to the top slide. And <laughs> what I didn't account for was that Katie was in a shell suit onesie and that thing slides, man. That <laughs> 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 so I was like a wicket keeper in the slips and <laughs> she came down this slide and I couldn't because it was a, like a covered over one. Molly, Molly came out like with the appropriate level of friction yeah. and stopped, ground to a halt, <laughs> and then Katie just came zipping <laughs> past me, and there was just this pink blur. <laughs> she shot off the end of the slide and landed on her hole, uh, and then from then on, like I couldn't, I couldn't convince her to go down any of the rest of the slides. So, uh, oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> pink shell tracksuit. Gotta see this. Yeah, that's no, pretty. It's, it's it's very nice again nostalgic <laughs> yeah i'm imagining like do you remember the british empire when with that tv show <laughs> yes yes their, very their, good their uniform that they always to wear <laughs> puffy tracksuit with the zips at the bottom <laughs> yeah yeah uh and then is that the end phase yeah. three pizza phase three disappointment pizza off you go uh, we'll come back. We'll come back to the the finer details in part two. Um, so to end part one, we forgot a few weeks ago to mention that we have surpassed two hundred and fifty thousand downloads. Why are we in six months? That's a quarter of a million listens. Some go on, boys. It's all right, isn't it? Thank you very much, all of you folk out there for uh, uh, for doing that. And the other day on Monday was our biggest ever day of listeners, for some reason. Uh, well done. Well done, everyone involved. All the listeners, all the boys, all the And girls. we started at nothing. At nothing. Just a <laughs> yeah. wee, just a, a wee indie production. Just ourselves. Yeah. Oh, Les, the state of the start, like how stressful <laughs> those things were. I know, not for us, <laughs> Dermy. <laughs> just for you to where, yeah. where we are now and how assured we Yeah, we haven't, we bro- we haven't broken you in a while. No, but sure, I got the hang of everything I'm doing. Yeah, we were breaking you uh, monthly there. Yeah, but it was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, here he comes. <laughs> here are the cracks. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, all right, we'll take a break. We'll come back with uh, as much rugby as you can remember because I remember nothing from the weekend. <laughs> Potholes and Penguins Six Nation shows brought to you by Camille Thai Restaurants. I love a chicken massa man, small ones, massive ones, good mood Thai food when you're dressed or in the nude. Six Nations on your couch, chili chicken in your mouth for takeaway deliveries. Camille Delicious Thai cuisine. Okay, welcome back, part two. So Frank Murphy could be. Uh, a dealer in Vegas could also be like a mystic tarot card reader flipping cards going, oh, <laughs> oh, shit. That's, that means dead. <laughs> and remember the Father Ted episode where he goes into the <laughs> oh, fortune yeah. teller and she flips three of them. And he's like, is that good? And she said, no, there's, there's only supposed to be two in each pack. <laughs> 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 Pass my... F- Across my palm with silver. I don't carry silver. Give me a pound. <laughs> uh, Frank was there flipping cards like no tomorrow. Six cards. Is it five yellows and a red? Uh, 
loads of people disgusted with outrage. Or was there four yellows and a red? No, I think you're right. I think it was five, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, and like you, I came back from one of my runs. I'd recorded the match and I started it at about quarter to nine. And I was I was so excited after 30 minutes. And then the red car was like, oh, well, I'm going watching Vikings for an hour. <laughs> 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 Turned it off. Uh so talk to me what are your thoughts let's go first about the the one that wasn't the yellow card to uh who was it was it is, um is it chukui no the first one uh for leinster was it max o'reilly who gave or was it o'brien was o'brien it was jimmy o'brien yeah jimmy o'brien uh could have been a red was a yellow what were your thoughts at the time uh at the time? my thoughts at the time was that's probably red um, but then he went yellow, and I sort of went, oh, okay. But then whenever mm, Andy too. Warwick's was a red, I went, well, let, I mean, <laughs> well, then his was definitely a red. Mm. It was my reaction. I wasn't outraged was at everyone's. the time. I was only outraged in hindsight. <clears throat> I say time. outraged. <laughs> at huh? the time, were you were you thinking, like, I, I didn't see you on TV, but what were you saying? Were you were you sitting on the fence, or were you? No, so I wasn't commentating. It was uh, Bernard and uh, Ferris mm -hmm. were com commentating so I was just doing a pitch side <laughs> actually that was quite funny I did a I did a pitch side at one stage and the, the producer just he just um, gets in Robbo's ear and just says intro Trimby here and then he brings me on and that was fine that worked and then the second half he couldn't get a hold of him so I was just standing down in pitch side and he was like Robbo 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 <laughs> if you could Robbo if you could just take a wee bit of <laughs> I was there 20 minutes and then the producer eventually just goes Trimby just go back up to the stand he's not listening <laughs> <laughs> he just literally just wasn't listening or could no, he not hear I think you? there was a tag I think it was a problem was with the tag, tag yeah okay. something going on <laughs> ah brilliant either that was just, or Robbo was just ignoring me but um yeah i thought it's first of all there's a lot of people giving off i'll be frank and i'm only taking the piss i genuinely i'm only taking the piss a bit because it's not his fault the, the players can't react to the new new interpretation like there's no headshots so stop clipping people in the heads mm. <laughs> lads like it's it's either the players or the coach's fault. It's not Frank's fault. People keep taking other lads' heads off. <laughs> like no, I mean the argument, the biggest argument that you see on from uh, talking to anyone or even on Twitter or whatever is that none of the players are hurt. So it, therefore, you shouldn't. There shouldn't be a red or a yellow card because the players aren't hurt. Which is that's not even doesn't even come into the equation. That that can't be um a factor it's if there's a headshot regardless it's got to be either <clears throat> a yellow which was the uh the decision on o'brien's because there was a mitigating factor which again i'm gonna agree with you i was there hmm, i didn't want to see the game ruined by there being a red card so i was there happy enough that the game isn't ruined and we've got yes a, agree yeah a but, yellow card. but afterward whenever but then, warwick whenever yeah. warwick's gone then you're going oh it'll be but, less ruined if it's ruined on both sides. <laughs> yeah, but then your Warwick's one, you can't. You have to take them in isolation a little bit. And that his, his one there was, uh, you just can't, like you're saying, players have to take responsibility. You cannot put your your arm into someone's throat like that. And people saying it went up off the chest or whatever is, is the same as saying it didn't hurt the player or whatever. You can't lead with the forearm like that. So it was, I was the same. I was like, this game is ruined now. And so my conclusion from the whole thing is that they're like in Australia, they're bringing introducing red cards that you can then replace the player after is it 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that. And that has to be the way currently the way we ref it is this game is refed the same as football in a sense that we have yellow and red cards, but the yellow card is way worse than a yellow card in football. However, to get a yellow card or a red card in football, you have to do way worse things than you have to do in rugby. So rugby is a violent, aggressive, physical sport. And yellow cards are going to be, and red cards, like we saw in that game. Okay, it's diff you, you have to, the onus has to be on a player to mind themselves. But for someone to be, to have, you know, maybe a high shot, let's say O'Brien's was a red card, it was a mid, you know, and even like Bundyaki's knock on against against Monster the other night, where he's going for an intercept, and it's just a reactive thing, and he gets a yellow card, and he's off the pitch for ten minutes. You're kind of going, that's it's they're they're really harsh sanctions 
for for incidents that are re- so reactive. So if if a player gets a red card, it shouldn't ruin the entire game. That player could be banned for five or six weeks and they have to take that and that's the ramifications for them. But the game shouldn't be ruined because of one stupid incident that could have gone either way. Uh, I don't see did, another way out of that other than that. But I, um, I think what what other people are suggesting is that um, if if they introduce that, <clears throat> um, what is it? They put them on report or whatever it is, um, and then they get to replace them after ten minutes. Then you're 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 saving the game, but you're you could be doing more damage to the game because there's no um, there's no way to encourage people to stop doing it to st- like because. Because there's not much, there's not much by way of repercussion. I know he's got, whoever it is, the individual is going to get cited or whatever. But mm-hmm. there's no outcry. They're not. If there's way bigger, <clears throat> there's way bigger punishment. I think if a game has effectively been ruined because of one person's actions. So there's a lot more. There's a lot more shame. I think there's a lot more um, impetus. Okay, so the, that's yeah. the long game. The long game is that this could take a couple of years for everyone yeah. to learn so how to adjust. But in the meantime, yeah, so we just have to put up with the fact that every weekend we go to a game. It's grand now and we're sitting at home and I can switch off and watch Vikings. But if <laughs> I, like, which was a lot of the complaints last year when people were going to games, if you pay your money and you put, an, you put, you know, this is your night out, you bring your kids, whatever, and you go to a game and something gets red carded after 10 minutes, and the game is effectively over uh, because of one stupid decision. And that's not a, like, like again, football, for some of that to happen in football, it never happens. Very rarely will someone get, be that stupid to get a, a red card at the start of a game. But rugby, the chances of that happening are, are, it's happened so often. Every second game seems to be affected by it now. You saw the Premiership a few weeks ago where there's five red cards in one weekend out of like seven games. Um, just insane you know yeah i, I just but don't all, see all the legal stuff going on at the minute and I, we don't know what way that's going to go with like um you know brain injuries and long long-term effects of concussion and um early early onset kind of alzheimer all, all this kind of stuff mm-hmm. like really serious stuff that will threaten our the game will threaten the game long term and i think purists would say um it's worth it's worth ruining a, a load of games now it's worth ruining a season two seasons worth of games or mm-hmm. the potential of that for the long term the longevity of the game and that's assuming that that eventually how many cards uh, what five six cards at the weekend people getting red carded left right and center eventually the 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 players will cop on and they'll stop they'll stop doing it like their um their tackle tech just doesn't seem to be changing and no one seems to be re- reacting and um, I wonder, like, so, so Pete O'Mahony, like, he did, he did that to the Scarlets player just before autumn. He got a red card, and then he did the same thing in the Six Nations. He got a red card. Like, what's go- how are they? How are they still? How are they still making the same mistakes over and over? And it's not, it's not Frank's fault. He, he's going. This is chaos. But what am I supposed to do? Now, I, I don't think he got, I don't think he got the one with Jimmy O'Brien right. And I think there's a case where Dev's is a red card as well. Now, Dev, that's so tough on Dev. <laughs> like, how is he so, supposed to so get weird. get low on on Mike Laurie? But that's 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 it. That's what we're asking for, and it's tough, so tough on him. But I think his was slightly more in a, more of a seatbelt, more than a seatbelt tackle. Like he mm. clipped him, clipped him in the head a bit. Yeah, it's like when I when Mick falls off the couch and I try and catch him. That's kind of what that what that was like. You're just <laughs> swinging your arm. <laughs> You don't care. You just yeah. He hits the deck, and you, and he's got punched by his dad. That's, that's what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that that again is that's why it's just gonna. It's, it's hard. I, I'm, to be fair, I'm. Uh, were you? Would you have been? Would you have committed many high tackles? I remember there was one there recently. Yeah. Someone put into our Facebook when you nearly took someone's head off. But yeah. Was there was there would that have been something? You would have been going. You'd have been fairly aggressive defenders. You'd have been going to absolutely end lads a lot of the time. How often yeah, do you reckon you'd have got around? And it's tough. It's tough for wingers as well because quite often if you're trying to close the gate and you're trying to get man and ball, then you're desperately trying to get them to stop the ball mm. being tipped on. And, and you got to stay up. up you got to right. stay up, and you got to stay yeah. high. So it's mm. really tough for wingers. Now, 
there was no such thing back then. Um, and I will not be made to feel guilty <laughs> in hindsight, right? Because there was no such thing. There was no seatbelts. No, <laughs> there was, no one had heard of a seatbelt. No seatbelts seat back in our day. <laughs> just put your hand out. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, just hold on to each other. Keep pressing the brakes, put your hand out. <laughs> uh all right. Well, after after that, there was there was nothing much. I, I still loved uh, quite a few moments that that Ulster had. To be fair, I love the brand of rugby. I think it's very exciting, uh, especially that Balakoon try. As I was saying, the multi phase beforehand, working the way up the field, and then the finish. Balakoon looks as sharp as fake. Yeah. Uh, Did you think his try should have been disallowed? Uh oh. I, th- I think Reese Ruddock kind of knew what he was doing cleverly. He could have easily gone off uh, McCluskey. It was so obvious McCluskey wasn't getting the ball. Uh, I think that to be a block, McCluskey has to be hitting Ruddock's outside shoulder to, to block him. But uh, it was a bit of a 50 50. Uh, I think Ruddock, Ruddock just did, knew what he was doing, did well, kind of. Yeah, in the balance of it, I think. Balakun received the ball inside McCluskey, yeah, that's just which it, is the only it? issue. But I still think, in the balance of it, there, I don't think that I don't. I think that's, I think it should be a try, but I don't mm-hmm. think it should be. Everybody's saying that's definitely a try. I think it should be a try. Just, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, no, for, I, f- yeah. For all those reasons that you said, it's it, on paper. It sh- it it probably shouldn't be a try, but. When yeah. you look at how Ruddock could have gotten gotten easily gotten off, then maybe should have been should have been. And then Balakun, for some reason, everybody everybody knows how good this guy is, how how clinical he is, how quick he is, and there was something about him. Whenever he made that break, I I knew he was going to score. Mm. <laughs> I, I just knew he was going to score. He yeah. gets any space, he's just ruthless. He's um. He's a very, very bright prospect. Yeah. That's why it was so gotten because he's going well. Jacob looks like he's going well. Mikey Laurie obviously going well. That Ulster, you know, James Hume looked pretty Hume sharp. Was great, man. Yeah. He's, he's proper 13. He's got an outside break. He's powerful. He's quick. He's a good distributor. Uh, I was very impressed with him. And yeah, what was the young lad that came on that you said uh, earlier on that got the yellow card? Uh, oh, uh, um, Cormac, uh, is it Chukwe? Yeah. Well done. Uh, <laughs> he Murray Kinsella did a piece on him in the paper today. It was brilliant. Uh, yeah, he ended up in Scotland, years. didn't he? Yeah, what a journey. Yeah. Gas, man. Um, but brilliant story. Moved over from from England. His mum was from Ireland. And uh, they moved back to Tullamore when he was a kid. And I think there was three of them. And uh, she was a single mom, And raised him. Like he was even talking about it. It kind of reminded me of you. He didn't, didn't have TV or... Uh, <laughs> or he played with hot rods. He played with hot rods <laughs> in the church band. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd be missing out on all the jokes in school, like anyone talking about the Simpsons. You'd be around the hook it out, uh, so That's Park. like me with your family, uh, family guy gags. <laughs> South Park <laughs> or South <sorry, sorry>, Park? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking of you, right? Uh, and then played a bit of. I think he was a winger in school. Went to Ross Gray. His mom was like working day and night to put the three kids through school he was a bit difficult himself and in school we got um got into ross grave for the f- i think maybe a sixth year or something and played on the wing and got pretty i think got just had a big growth spurt and then uh got pretty pretty good played a bit of sevens rugby and then just decided himself i think i'm gonna go to scotland put up a stuff on instagram like videos of him playing and got it uh, over to a club in scotland and <clears throat> started putting more videos up himself and played, I think, sevens for Ireland. And then Dan McFarland got on to him by coming to Ulster and transformed him into a second row because he obviously had an, another growth spurt. He's massive. And I wonder if uh, that was it. I wonder, was it da- Dan McFarland's Glasgow connections when he was there? Maybe it was. Again, my brain is mush today. I did read the article, <laughs> but I was, yeah. I was getting blurry. He, when I was anyway, he looks, he looks very decent. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Very good, and I love cool stories like that. Yeah, but again, we've we've spent the whole time talking about Ulster, even yeah. though they got beat. And and actually, it wasn't all about the cards. Leinster were so dominant, and it was like, it was just the contrast. Really, just Ulster were throwing the ball 
why had Leinster were just so dominant and so mm. ruthless whenever they just just the tap and goes in the twenty two and they're just it just feels that like was cool, wasn't it? I love it's only a matter of time. Yeah, old school. I like to see I'd like to see um some some teams bring back the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> it's been half a training session working on the wall. Yeah. Uh yeah, just give it to the, the, the bowling ball player, whichever player resembled the bowling ball mo- most. And then someone took the, took the ball off their jersey. Do you remember that was always? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, anyway, Leinster were like, uh, they, didn't, they didn't need the cards necessarily. It helped them obviously, but like they got back into control in the game um, before that red. It was 17-12 whenever Warwick got redded. So like Ulster had already lost control of the game completely. Before that had happened, so they can't blame it all on the cards. Yeah, more young fellas coming through. Max O'Reilly's break and <coughs> offload to McGrath was oh, it was wild. Oof, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, Scott Penny again playing class. Uh, yeah, it'll be tough for Munster again to to beat them in the final. Uh, Munster against Connacht the weekend didn't didn't. Uh, it was a good game. I was I was doing yeah, great radio game, yeah. for a great game. I had such a lovely time. Jeez, I love doing the radio talking shite and watching rugby and just with Dan O'Sullivan from Limerick 9, Live 95 FM sends his your his regards to you and you Dermy. Uh, yeah, just sitting there, lovely little buzz. There's only about seven or eight people in the in the press box and everyone's in good form, just delighted to be out of the house. Met Donald O'Sullivan uh, or uh, the, there's my fucking Donald Lennon. Here's my brain gone to mush. Who's Donald? I don't even know anyone called Donald Sullivan. <laughs> I was racking my brains. I was like, Trimby, think quickly uh, here. Who is this guy? Uh, Donald Lennon. Uh, I'm not going to say he's a penguin, but he, lis- he listens to the show a few times. Is he? Uh, Brilliant. Yeah. Very, very surprised at you. Uh, thought you were just very religious and a lovely, good religious boy. Uh, but then I think he, he met you at. Was he at the same dinner table as you for Dunner's as a testimonial? Yes. Yeah, was he like, was brilliant. Actually, he went. He got up and spoke. Um, he was very good. He said you were very good. Oh, well, we were both very good. That's he said it. you were hilarious. He, he was completely blown away by your character. He is a fucking legend, I have to say. He's so sound and just the nicest fatherly man. <laughs> it's only <what> <laughs> fatherly, yeah. Uh, Ah, oh, he's just, he's a, still a unit, my God. You don't make him like that anymore. He's uh, hes wide, his hips are like the width of the table. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fine moustache. <laughs> Very nostalgic moustache. Do you reckon own. you look at his moustache and he reminds you of your own dad, Mick the Granddad? Definitely. Has Mick got a moustache now? I don't know, he does have sometimes though. Mick! <laughs> Have you a moustache? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to hate when anyone with a moustache was killed in like Die Hard or something back in the day. <laughs> because it would always remind me that of my dad. I'd be like, fuck, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the monster match was, uh, it was good. It was, there was, uh, Connick started pretty brightly. Looked good for most of it, but... Uh, Monster is so hard to beat. Mike Haley is has he has he been like building towards that type of a performance for a while, or has that come out of the blue? When Felix was signing him for Monster, what's that? Four years ago, he was raving about him, and from an attacking point of view, uh, that exactly that kind of stuff. That's what Felix was mad about his his kick chase receipt and uh, his footwork and stuff like that. And uh, we haven't seen a huge amount of it, maybe because of the way Munster have been playing, that they haven't, uh, they haven't allowed that to happen. But and and you know what, the first half it was more the same, but then it felt like someone at halftime told Mike Haley, "You have a go here. You got to win the game first. Because be, even before that try, he, he had a few big moments, big offloads. Yeah. And uh, but that try was sensational. Oh, um, so the highlights for me are um, uh, Mike Healy and Ben Healy's hair is just, have you ever seen a man to turn around a hairstyle so quickly? 
He's gone from zero to hero for me. He was the man who was playing the long game. He knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or did he? <laughs> 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 yeah, they're 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 all the rage, the mullets now, aren't they? Yeah, but he's doing it right. There's a lot of terrible mullets out there. Thornbury, the uh, the Connet second row. Mm, he's just very sweaty. I wonder what it's like. Yeah, when it gets I wonder a bit if of... he was dry. Yeah, if you could maybe put a bit of volume into that. Yeah, because it's very straight. Yeah, it's Quinn like Rue. It's almost Quinn like Rue had a afford, terrible one as well. It's like he can't afford to finish the haircut as opposed to it being a style. You know what <laughs> I mean, uh, who else? Ben or even Craig Casey's got a little bit of one. It's more of a maybe. A I think he looks like he's started to to shave a mullet in and then going. Oh, no, 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 no! I'm not going to bother. Yeah, he kind of like it, soul glow from coming to America. It's a bit of a perm. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Here his dad was on uh, Today FM. We got, again, we got national press this week. Yeah, three uh, weeks in a row. Three weeks in a row. His dad was on after you fucking called it. Called him out for uh, <laughs> for uh, going after the limelight. And he was on Today FM <laughs> on Dave and Dermot. I have a famous son. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest show on Today FM. One of the biggest ratings, I'd say, in the country. And... Uh, he said that he's getting a slagging off Barry Murphy and Andrew Trimble on potholes and things. <laughs> <laughs> that we've been calling them a pothole. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That'll be great for our numbers. Yeah. So, uh, well done you. Well done you. Just keep going after people, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love the way you've took half the blame there because you, <laughs> you were just sitting there feeling awkward because you were wondering... <laughs> Uh, Is he going to think that I've told him this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he cares, really. Uh, he's loving us. So, yeah, good to, good, uh, good to get that acknowledgement, isn't it? But other than that, what about that game? What else happened? Uh, Munster, so Connacht, I know, you're, I know you're probably, it sounds like you're a little bit disappointed the way Munster played, but Connacht are a side that just... They're so inconsistent. They're so up and down, but I think they they really turn it on for Interpros. Mm. Actually, they really turn it on for Leinster and Munster, mostly um, of 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 late. Anyway, I don't think they played that well against Ulster um, this season. But obviously, they beat Leinster in the RDS, and they played incredibly that night. I thought they played really well for long periods oh, on yeah. Friday, um, and I thought Munster just show. I think showed just how good they are. Um, uh, honestly, I think Munster actually have a really good chance of beating Leinster. Leinster, I think, look like they are struggling for confidence. And I think, now, granted, it's Leinster bees, right? But but we've always said there's not much of a drop-off between their first team and their second team. So if that's the case, then you can you can come to some conclusions about their second team and that be consistent all the way through. But I think it shows that they're lacking confidence because they just they tighten things up and they go back to basics and they, they use that to get energy. Then to then they get the opportunities whenever your mom, uh, Max O'Reilly, then looks for that break and that offload. That only comes whenever they do the basics really well and they go back to basics way more. And I think that's a side that looks just a little bit, a little bit ever so slightly unsure of themselves. And I think Munster are getting better. I think Leinster are dropping off. Interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. And I wasn't overly disappointed with Munster there. I think they had... Uh, Ben Healy hadn't played in a long time and uh, he looked rusty and the major problems the Munster had was getting out of their 22 in the first 20, 25 minutes and they conceded a few scores because of it. The line-out wasn't working well and that I'd put largely down to Thornbury and Ulton Delan being both 6'6 six six and 6'7 six and Thornbury having the game of his life and uh, the Munster line-out didn't operate. Uh, so they just allowed Connacht to control the game for a lot of it. And then, as you said, like Bundyaki was unreal. Thought Carity was good. Um, and then they've just got it. One thing, one, one, with a full side that they had, they're, they're a very, very strong team. And I think they would have picked up a lot of confidence from how they finished the game in the sports ground against Munster a while back. So hats off for Munster not playing particularly well and still winning kind of convincingly. Almost in the end, you had that when the bench came off, come on, when Carby came on, when Dale Ender came on, you kind of felt like there was a sense of inevit inevitability. Uh, so yeah, going to, with regards to beating Leinster, they were they've been very close 
obviously in the last three times, maybe not as much in the semi-final of the Pro 14 last September, but in the, the game there just after Christmas in January, uh, when who scored that try in the corner? Was it Larmer scored? You know, other than that, Munster had the beating of them. Uh, but they, they do need to, maybe it is the Carberry factor that could be the difference. Mm. That, that one guy that will, you know, a lot of pressure on him, isn't there, though? Oh, there is, isn't there, yeah. To come back after so long out and please deliver, be there. Yeah. For everybody, for not just for Munster, for everyone, mm. for all of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll see what else is going on in the rugby world. A few contract things. Uh, Johnny Sexton, did we talk about? Did we talk about that? Yeah, he's gone for a year. Keen Healy signed for a year. Peter Manny getting a two year. Gavin Coombs getting a two year for Munster. Um, anything else? I think Johnny would have ideally tried to get another year if he could. Do you think so? Yeah, I'm sure. I, 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 I that agree. age, what thirty seven? He's thirty seven well, in June. Yeah, I know, but he like you never get two years at that age. Surely. No, exactly. You, you never would, even if you're Johnny Sexton. But he's got the best chance of doing it. Um, mm. He he backs himself though, and he's competitive, and he will definitely go as long as he can. He, I'm sh- I'm certain he'll be he'll be trying to get to this World Cup and make sure that he's still in the driving seat of the World Cup. Yeah, let's see. I think that, although he <coughs> reacted very poorly to um, Jared Gilroy talking to about him about it on off the ball a few weeks ago, as understandably you would because it's not in your control and you can't predict what you're going to be like two years down the road and what the, the coaches are going to uh, do. But the idea of maybe Joby, Joey, Joby, Joey Carberry, Carberry being our starting 10 with someone like Johnny Sexton still in the squad to come on and finish a game. Might know, it's pretty cool. Cool story as well. Uh, anyway, what about the Irish team for next weekend? Scotland, how do you think, how, like, do you think we've, we've the beat in Scotland? Uh, jeez. Um, yeah, I mean, in the past you wouldn't have thought you wouldn't have thought twice about it, but we're just we just haven't got that we haven't got that confidence. I, I, I think we'll get a bit of confidence from Italy, but every player in that team will know that they've played better than they did in the first two games. But they'll know that put it in the context of it's just Italy, hmm. and um, and then Scotland will have the combination of the confidence from the the first game against England, and then the I suppose the edge that they that they got their pants pulled down against Wales. Um, so I, I, I honestly I think they will. I think hopefully I don't know. I don't know if they will or not. To be honest, I hope they do. I hope they dig deep and hope they're able to get a big performance. Mm-hmm. Um, they, it it feels like there's a lot more in them. Um, and hopefully, if we see something similar to the performance against Italy, um, it's just not the it's just not the norm and it's not it's not the Scotland of old and it's not just if we play well we'll beat Scotland we could play well and still not beat Scotland that's that's a completely different landscape now hmm. well the competition has been throwing up some uh, crazy results and performances so the message coming from the camp and from the players is that we're getting there trust us it's going to happen so i'm being naively confident that it's gonna click, and I think we've uh, Scotland sometimes can suit us to play against. Their line speed isn't as aggressive as France or Wales or England, which I think will suit a lot of our players. Uh, and yeah, I think as you said, confidence will be a little bit up, and I think they'll be mad for a, a good lash off this. Now, you know, everyone fit, everyone ready to go. I think Murray starts if he's fit. I do. 100%. Do you think Ronan Kelleher starts if he's fit? I would. I don't know if that he will. Uh, I think he's got to be the future for me. He's, he's class. Uh, so I'd be putting him in there. I wouldn't be making Will a Connors, change. Will Connors did enough to, to get another start? I think so, didn't he? What a big killer. Uh, yeah, tough one, isn't it? Yeah. I think Keane Healy came on, didn't play well against Italy when he came on, made it good few mistakes gave away a couple of penalties dropped the ball and he can get a bit um he can switch off at times when he thinks you know when maybe when the game isn't in the balance uh killer 
on the other side of things was just humming because that was his first proper start. I think it was only his mm. second or third start for Ireland. So he was really raring to make an impact. And obviously we know what Keane Healy can do. So it's uh, they'd probably go with the tried and trusted, wouldn't they? Maybe have Killer as an impact because he's definitely more of an impact than Keane Healy is. I think they'll maybe... I, I know you're probably thinking, as a lot of people are keen, to get Ty Furlan back in. Um, and I think if you start Ty... Then you can potentially you could go you could go killer, uh, and then if uh, the the other way around. Although I I think um, Porter's done incredibly well. well um, I just think Tig is such an integral part of the the ball playing side for Ireland. More so, there's than very Porter. little between either tight head and loose head, first and second choice. I think mm, just but his ability to play ball, it's fucking so class. Get him on yeah. the field, but who knows? We'll see during the week. Um, so I think Jacob's done enough to get back in the mix. Uh, probably not. You know, again, if that game had turned out a little bit different, if if there hadn't been a red card and Ulster in a bit of a stronger position, we might have seen more of him. But uh, he didn't do anything wrong. But it just he uh, it, it'd be tough to put him straight back in there, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, if if Low is there because of his left boot, then I think Jacob's got a better left boot. And I think Jacob adds potentially more uh, elsewhere. Yeah. In the long run, I'd agree with regards to next week and bringing someone new into camp because I don't think Jacob's been there all along. Um, and I'd imagine James Lowe is very in the middle of everything in that Irish camp at the moment. I'd say it might be hard to get him out of there. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll take a quick break and come back for part three. Bottles and Penguins is an independent production and what I mean by that is It may sound like we don't know what we're talking about you might even think Barry's hardly even played professional rugby and Dermy likes hurling we want you to think that it takes a lot of preparation to sign this unprepared We work very very hard at what we do and we want to make this show the best podcast in the world for just a five or a month you can help us do that Go to patreon.com forward slash potholes and penguins and you can help me make these two fools look and sound even better than I already am making them look. Okay, welcome back to part three. The four power provinces of Ireland brought to you by Energia, the proud sponsors of the All-Ireland League and Ireland's greenest energy supplier. This week... We've got a first on the show. We are joined by a family. We've got Paul and Louise Flanagan and their son, Rory Flanagan, all the way from Rainy Old Boys Club and the heart and soul of the club, may I say. Uh, Two former presidents, Louise and Paul, the current club secretary and their son, Rory, who is also still uh, doing a bit of damage around the park as well. As a back rower, I believe. For, is it a back rower? For my own, second row. Second row. Second row. damage for my own team, I think, more than <laughs> uh, Now, we are, this is a first, as we said, and not very often you get to talk to a husband and wife who have been presidents of an all Ireland League club, and I, for one, was delighted when I heard this. Dermy said, Jesus, like, they're like the Clintons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> earlier on. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> the dry cleaning bill. Yeah. So, uh, Louise, you're all the way from Cork. Have you still got that Cork accent? I have indeed, yes. Yeah. What do you think? Although I'm told I don't, but I'm here now for must be 35 years. I don't think I've got a northern accent anyway, have I? Ah, uh, there's a bit of a hint of it, all right now. Ah, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I'll put her down in Cork for a few days. It comes back quickly. <laughs> I've no doubt. So, Quick. qu- quickly tell me how that happened. How did you? How did you end up all the way up there, far from home, uh, from Cork? Well, it's pretty straightforward, really. I worked in the bank in Dublin, and Paul was a student at Trinity. And just one day, I went to a match out in Donnybrook, and. That night, myself and my friend went to Blinkers Nightclub, and <laughs> who was there with Paul, and he asked me to dance, and the first thing I asked him was, do you like rugby? And he had been to the same game as myself that day in the old-fashioned sort of um, Donnybrook, so, and it just went from there. 
Wow. So and what club are you associated with in Cork? Who, who's your... Oh, Sunday as well. Sunday's Big time well. Sunday as well. And I, I was born <clears throat> into rugby. Born into rugby. And then you're still a huge Munster fan. And did you convert the entire family then to be Munster fans? Um, well, I think maybe, well, we have to go for Ulster when we're here anyway. <laughs> but um, I just, but the Sunday as well is definitely in my blood anyway, because my dad, Tom, he held all the positions in the club after he played. And my brother, Paddy, played and captained the side for a year. And it was just always rugby at home. Uh, there was only my brother and myself, and I think I was used as an out half and a hooker out in the garden because <laughs> my brother was a scrum half. As I say, and my dad used to throw the ball in sometimes, and I'd have to be the out half to receive Paddy's uh, passes, and sometimes I'd have to throw the ball into the line out to dad so that he'd pass it, tap it down to Paddy. So I was used from an early age anyway seeing as there were no other boys in the family, but um, there was certainly rugby every Saturday. And it was Cork and Limerick. We used to travel up and down all the time. And my dad loved heading to Limerick for a game as well. And they, all our friends are really rugby. And so I took that with me to Dublin. And then I was sort of, I think, I'd like to think it was Paul's meal ticket for a few years in Dublin because I had the job. <laughs> And then he went back up north when he qualified. And then I got a transfer in 1985 and followed him up and worked in Belfast for a few years. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Wow. And how did you end up uh, with Rainy Old Boys then? How did that become your club? Well, Paul is from Cookstown and the closest um, town at that state. He worked in um, Maherfelt. There was a hospital there and that was where he took up his first position after he qualified. So it was natural to go to the Rainey. So he played in Rainey from, well, I mean, he would have known a lot of people before the 1980s, but he started to play himself, was it 1983? Yeah. And so from then on, we've just always all our socialising, all our rugby, everything is all to do with Rainey. And... Um, as I say, when then and Paul has held practically every position in the club. But I beat him to president. I was the first <laughs> president. Did you? But he had already been chairman, secretary, medical officer. Or, um, what else were you? Right. Chairman? Merchandise at a time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I've taught him all he needed to know when it got yeah, to his yeah. presidency. Of Show course. Me the you swooped in and went for the main job. I did yeah. a course, yeah. yeah. Well, what's the, uh, Somebody said to me, so the first year Louise was in this prison, I now had a role like the Duke of Edinburgh. I had to walk two paces behind her at all the functions. <laughs> Fact. Fact is right. I'm chauffeur as well. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So what, what are your uh, what are your favourite memories of the of the club? Are you a favourite moment, either from your presidency or, or you know... What well, you... well, from the presidency, I suppose it would have been um, when we were playing UCC because that meant going back down to Cork, the home town of Cork. I had a short sojourn in UCC myself, but that's for another day. Um, and then to receive UCC up to our club in Marifelt, which was just fantastic. That's, you know, what the, the All-Ireland League has done for us, really, is, I mean, people would never have heard of Marifelt. They would have just assumed it was, all, you know, the Belfast clubs. And um, it certainly put us on the map um, in terms of, um, you know, uh, travel and people coming to to visit our town and what we have to offer. So that, as I say, the, the cork Marifelt link was brilliant. And of course, obviously, before I was president, it was um, 2006 when Rainey got into the All-Ireland League. I mean, that was just probably one of the, up there as one of the biggest days for us, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah. yeah and particularly the, the All-Ireland Junior Cup at Lansdowne Road. That's what that, that. Yeah. You won yeah. that. What year was that? That was the first year, 2006, where we're the first name on that trophy. Really? Brilliant. And it's a super competition. I think it's a great competition for guys who aren't senior. Just that, you know, you have four from each province or whatever, every season are in the hat. Mm. Guys get to move down, Bally, Clare, Clare Valley, all the guys who can tour all over Ireland, and most people love it. It's, it's a great competition. 
and a great stepping stone, I, I think, into senior rugby. Yeah, would that have been your, your favourite then, Paul? What what year did you come in as, uh, as I, president? I, I was in last year, actually. So um, I, I probably got two quick favourites. First of all, we, we won the uh, Stevenson Shield, the All-Ireland or the um, Ulster Senior League for the first time. So that, that was a tremendous achievement for us. We had got a Senior Cup final a few years ago and took a bit of a hammering from Ballymena. But... Um, Probably my other memory of, of my year as president, we went to a club called UL Bowes. They're a, they're a Limerick <laughs> club, I think. And um, we, we, we had the lunch there in MJ's. And um, uh, M- MK Clancy was president, Mike. And uh, we had a super lunch there, a lovely lunch, just probably about a dozen of us. And then it, it came to time to head out to the ground. We were playing um, UL Bowes. So what, we, we squeezed into cars, and the guy we were with at lunch, who unfortunately I've forgotten his name, it wasn't Packy Durkin, now I'll absolve him from any blame here, <laughs> but um, he t- we headed out, down in through Houses State, down a narrow road, to a rather desolate, <laughs> abandoned area, which was on a cut. <laughs> we were actually playing in, in the University of Limerick that day, <laughs> so the guy was humiliated. Was, was he got some stick when we got up to you. Yeah. He's a street. lovely guy. It's just um, so we got to see Anacotti anyway. Yeah, and obviously got to see UL, which is a superb facilities. And the guy again, I apologise for not remembering his name. Took us through the grounds, and it's an incredible setup you have down there in Limerick. Incredible. Yeah, it is. And I asked and my dad sort of, earlier on, "What's what's your uh, what are your memories of of rainy old boys?" And he said, "Sure, didn't they fucking beat us in UL?" Two years ago. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even with a red card. <laughs> uh, Paul could talk it through that here now. My dad's actually my dad's in the back room the here. Card, I'd say if we brought him in here, he could. Uh, I'd say the two weeks. <laughs> uh, and how about you, Rory? Were you playing that day? No, no, I've I've uh, never never done the the first fifteen jersey for the rainy. I'm a, a thirds thirds man now. Um, but like I would always have been, you know, the, those days that uh, there were t- the moment I were talking about there. The two thousand and six season was was unreal. Like I was in uh, I was in school. I was lower sixth, and uh, you know it was great. We'd play our school match in the morning, and then we'd be getting into the car and going up. There'd be three or four of us would, would go. At, at that time, you know, it was it was a qualifying league in Ulster, so you'd be going up to real tough. Tough battles up at you know, Coleray and Sandal Lodge for me, and um, you know Ballymoney down in the Skillin, and you know, it was great. Thankfully, I think that year, sort of from two thousand four, five, six, we were always up there, and you know, but there were never whitewashes. It was great, close, tight, tightly fought games, and um, just as that, that those seasons went on, then culminating in two thousand and six. Uh, getting promotion against Monkstown in, t- in the round robin playoffs in the AIL. Uh, that was that was an unbelievable day. And uh, as a, I think I was sixteen or seventeen, I haven't drank whiskey since. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I learned my lesson early on, which was good. But, uh, now we uh, hear about it. Yeah, we didn't saying. know that. That <laughs> 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 was probably the noise from the helicopters that upset you. Mon- Monkstown had two helicopters of supporters up that day. Jesus. <laughs> That, no, was two, was that was big, the heart of 2006, stuff. so that yeah, that, that explains a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. before it burst, yeah. the bubble was still inflated. Yeah. Like we I, come from, you know, I mean, my earliest memories are, you know, like, the, like a, a farmer's field in sort of the early 90s. I'd be, Dad would have been playing, and I'd be there bringing on the, the oranges at half time, and um, like you know, farmer's fields, you know, pitch, no clubhouse, it was a porta cabin. And you know, in the space of those twenty years, where we got up into the All Ireland League, um, then last year uh, beating Blackrock in the All Ireland the Two A playoff finals was mad. It's like to think of where Blackrock have been, you know, such an illustrious, famous club um, when where we were twenty twenty five years ago to, to beat them that day down in Strandbrook was was brilliant. Um, you know, it was a real good. Good core of, of boys there now in the first at the minute. And hopefully, uh, when we get back to rugby, whenever that might be, there'll be a few more days to come as well. Yeah. So who who's uh, who's coaching you now at the moment? Is it John John Andrews coaching? Yeah. You at the moment, is it? Yeah. So uh, we've got John Andrews uh, as a head coach, um, and Dam- Damien Campbell, um, guy who 
who, who came up through through the school and played in those glory years up to 2006, getting us into the uh, All Ireland League, and then he found it was a mainstay of the hooker for another seven or eight years after that. Um, he takes the forwards, um, and then uh, Ian McKinley was our our backs coach for for this year. It's not um, bad. It was, it was nice, nice. So uh, unfortunately, they only got three or four games, sort of September, October. Um, but hopefully, now in the next, we, we might get a run. Yeah, you couldn't, you games. couldn't convince him to Louise. You couldn't uh, convince him maybe to to put the boots back on. Ask him nicely enough. He has been. Well, asked. yeah, so you can imagine. Yeah, as Paul said, he has been asked. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> put the pressure on. He's got a he's got a connection to the area. He married into that area. Is that right? That's exactly uh-huh, it, yes. Uh-huh. He's married to a girl from Balahi, so um, he, he's going to be staying in the area anyway. So we'll see, um, you know, if it might be difficult for him to come down that level. We'll see how it goes. And, and how have you found things um, with with no rugby? Has there been, like, I'm just looking, this is, it, it's a busy kind of um, dashboard we got here with a number of tiles, and this this is very much like a like a like a zoom quiz is what we're this is kind of what yeah, this looks is. like. <laughs> have there been a, 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 did that die a death or was that just lockdown mark one or how are, you, how are you keeping in touch with the rest of the players and keeping everybody together and keeping the club keeping the buzz yeah i think the the at the minute you know the, the, we have a gym at the club and going back to sort of the middle of when lockdown kicked in last year um when it was about to kick in the gym was raided and the boys all came in or well an organized raid where um barney (laughs) barney smith our our director of rugby came in and said look we don't know how long we're going to be out for here if anyone wants to come and take weights and do your own home training um there was a program set up so uh i think all boys took all the weights home um and were training i think flat out on the, the zoom quizzes um they all had programs that they were they were following and um i think it was about july time then we were able to get back into the gym um or back into the club actually and uh, the weights made a some of the weights came back some uh, <laughs> some didn't but uh, as as luck would have it then they uh, they needed them again come december but i, th- I think there, there was a lot of work going on um, where the, the coaching the coaches were keeping in touch with the players um yeah Oh, well, look, in terms of the, the older people keeping in touch, we, we've got a guy called Arnie McLean in our club who's a superb fundraiser in Gander. He knows your dad. Yes, I know um, Arnie. Yeah. Arnie's been around a few clubs. You know, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> probably more clubs than Arnold Palmer, really. But <laughs> he's the stalwart of the club, great fundraiser. But he comes from a great rugby family pedigree as well. His brother, Alan McLean, was on the 79 tour to Australia with Ireland. Um, that was the famous Ollie Campbell, Tony Ward tour. Um, and um, unfortunately, in those days... Caps weren't awarded as easily off the bench. Fergus Slattery kept him at bay from getting his cap. But also on that tour was his brother-in-law, Harry Steele, who's a rainy man as well. So Harry's still about the club a bit as well. But Arnie gives us all regular phone calls and updates on the gossip. If it happens, Arnie hears it first and gets it out there. Every club needs an Arnie. <laughs> oh, yes. No doubt we need our Arnie anyway. So. Yeah. Well, look, we... Just what Rory mentioned, uh, that we played in a farmer's field, I think. Yeah. I think it's fair to mention that the farmer, um, that, that field was a gentleman's agreement that in July every year, the farmer removed the sheep from the field to allow pre-season, <laughs> pre-season training to begin. But when we got our new grounds in town, we, we named the... The grounds after Billy Hattrick, who unfortunately passed away in August of this year, uh, but he was a great stalwart of the club as well and a past president. And he loved the AIL. Didn't he, he loved it. He yeah, loved the travel. Yeah. Well, wow. even his later years, he was away with Billy Paul in June. Oh, it's a great, it's a great story. Like when you you hear clubs that have that have come up through in the last twenty years and uh, and break into senior ranks and break into the AIL and then. As you said, start start winning against teams like Black Rock and UL Bowes, and um, yeah, it's a brilliant yeah. story. <laughs> it is, it, it really is. UL and, Bowes. Uh, like it can be done. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's inspiring for other clubs, and that's what we're all about for this part of the show. So hopefully, we get you back playing rugby towards the end of this year or later in this year. And if you're coming down to Bowes, or hopefully, Louise, you get back to Cork. Oh, the yeah. first chance we get, yeah, we'll, we'll be on. Yeah. 
Can I just, can you see these guys? I can. Can you recognize what they are? A pair of Ireland shorts. They're a pair of Irish shorts, Irish player shorts. And I, I'm going back here to um, <laughs> the Rugby World Cup pre-match um, friendly um, Ireland versus Italy at Ravenhill. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. I'm not sure who actually won that game. Now, you recognize these, Andrew, do you? The mud's still on them. <laughs> My two daughters, Ruth and Kate, are fanatics and would be hanging about the back <laughs> gate or the changing room at Ravenhill. <laughs> Um, so we to have get your unwashed souvenirs. Souvenir <laughs> yes. How many years? You might notice there are actually two pair. There's a, a 36 and a 38. One pair belongs to Trims and the other belongs to Dars. So I think <laughs> Trim, we give you the 38s, the bigger arse. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that was definitely that was Dars. That was um, <laughs> so these hang on the wall anyway in our room. So <laughs> I just nonchalantly just tossed them out the changing room door, did I? <laughs> no, they got out of your kit bag, I kit think, bag, as you were yeah. walking through. I, I kept I'm on. Sure, sure oh, they, they were delighted. Oh. Yeah, I, I crucially kept a hold of. So that was, what date? 24th of August, I think. Um, and I, the reason why I remember that date is because that was the the day my nephew was born. Uh, oh. And he's in second year at Dariada in Balamoni now. Um, so he's, yeah, he's, what is he, 13 now? And uh, I, I get, I, I, I free my jersey, and he's got it up on his wall now. And me and him oh, are good brilliant. mates. So, but he's not yeah. the shorts. You know, <laughs> good memory to come out of that match, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was the, good. that was the game that um, we got to try in the last minute. The writing was on the wall, so we were obviously that was the World Cup to forget, yeah. and the writing was on the wall yeah. early because um, we nearly got beat by Italy in Belfast. <laughs> and Bel no doubt, Raj. Bel Raj. Was it was it Raj? Yeah, it was Raj. Raj. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I had a good week in Bordeaux anyway, between the Georgia and the Mabia game, so don't think you guys <laughs> did. <so. laughs> Hope you weren't drinking whiskey, Rory. You had a better hotel than they had at that stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we've taken enough of your Sunday night. Uh, thanks for being the first family to ever come on Potholes and Penguins. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you to Louise, Paul and Rory. Thanks a million. Best of luck for the rest of lockdown and hopefully we'll see you back. Uh, Thank you so much for having us, guys. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye. 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 Here, the Facebook group. Someone needs to go in there with a blunt object, uh, (laughs) and just a heavy blunt object, and just start taking lads' heads off. Oh yeah, it's melting my brain. Yeah, no need for pure racism going on there now. So. (laughs) I, well, I I was having a lovely night now last night myself, and I looked at my phone about maybe eleven or twelve, and a couple of the penguins messaged me to go, "Hey, here, you got to get rid of these. They're ruining the buzz." Like, mm. sending me screenshots of people that were just completely ruining the buzz. I lads, we're all at home, we're all going mad, we all have our own opinions about things, but you can't call people names. In <laughs> he was expecting. Group, like. I was expecting worse. You can't be. Well, you can't be racist, like you know. So, but I didn't see any. I didn't see any of the any of the racism. I just I, yeah. There was, I heard tell. So it, like someone was telling tales, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm not a fan of either. Like, I know don't be yeah. racist, but don't tell tales. <laughs> <laughs> which is worse? Like, racist. Up, my brother be beat me up when I'm younger, and I go in and tell my mother, and she'd be like, "Don't be telling tales." Right? <laughs> Oh, God, I mean, he's beating the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a bad mother. Me. Don't, Don't be an irresponsible doing. mother. Uh, uh, although, like, you can't, you can report content in the Facebook group to oh, the There's so much being reported these days. So, so did you call but, a lot of people? Yeah, I just so, got rid of them, yeah. The, the reporting thing, though, someone did something very funny um, a while back because reporting is obviously for something that's any, like, sexist comment or any inappro- inappropriate, serious co- content. Yeah, there's different <laughs> levels of report like that. You can say it's false yeah. news or racism or uh, but, hate speech. But someone reported um, a, a post by another penguin, and the post was, um, I think James Lowe's um, defensive reads are really letting him down, and I wonder if we should uh, consider, you know, you know, like a real nerdy rugby, and someone reported the content. <laughs> as, in, <laughs> as in, it's just shit crack. Yeah. So, <laughs> I encourage that. I know, oh, I love that. I was like, <laughs> good shite. Do you remember when our Facebook page was just people photoshopping <laughs> gas shit and hilarious stuff and yeah. 
Uh, and then it's we are victims of our own success, Barry. I know we've created a monster. And if you go on the for the other forums, which I don't, but I, occasionally you did pop up, and and it'd be the same people just fucking infecting all the other ones. Go handy, Willie. Bring it back to l- l- less rugby <laughs> and less abusive stuff. Yeah. Zo- zero racism. Yeah. Zero uh, sexist stuff and calling names unless they're funny. Uh, It's like this utopia we want. We might need to, to, at the end of all of this, just get everyone to drink the Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. Set up an old (laughs) mass, you know, what, uh, towards the end. But currently, chill out, Lee, for God's sake. Yeah. I'd be coming back from my... Fucking hour long runs, absolutely bet to the ropes, and I hope full of notifications. Like, oh, and the people get on to me as this well. This person like, got this, this person said this, and then you go in, you're like, oh, what, what are you doing? Like, what, why are you saying that? Like, <laughs> oh, I used to go out, get out of it. Yeah, yeah, go away out of it. Uh, all right, so that's the lot. Now, what's the name of the show this week, lads? Here we go. Movies. Here we go. It's coming. I can feel it. Was um, there an obvious one? It's like a fart coming now that could be a poo. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. Uh, did we talk about any films? Uh, how, we talked about House of Cards. Was that offline? Because we were talking about Bill and Hillary Clinton. Mm, not, uh, not a film. We 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 yeah. went a bit. We diversified last week by. Uh, See, I told. I knew this would happen. <coughs> you give, you give him an inch. <laughs> 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 Barry, if you wouldn't mind, blame the nutritionist. Blame the like, <laughs> you like collate your data for like sneezes and farts. <laughs> He's been sneezing and farting for the last two hours. Snarts, twitching, snarts, twitching. Uh, uh, could you could you name it? Have we named the Forest Gump? I've named the Forest Gump one already with the running. Ah, uh, mm. forest. I think we did call a forest penguin. Um, we could just do penguin gump. Oh, we've done it already. Don't get ratty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool runnings. We have we done a cool runnings, but that's just because your feet are roasting hot and you just want to stick them in icy water and run this shit off them. Happy feet. Happy feet. There you go. It's a penguin. That's one. a penguin. It's another diversification because uh-huh. it's a penguin film. Yeah. Look, like Trimby's getting a headache. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do the double puns for Trimby. We'll leave. Yeah. We'll leave. We'll leave it on a knife edge, lads. We'll see, and we'll come back to it. Although you'd already have known at this point what it is. Okay, see you now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. I'm about to explode. <laughs> my cholesterol, my legs. My oh yeah, come here. My heart is grand. Oh, is it? I got the results there on Friday. That's the only. That's the only part of you that's grand now. Yes. It was the only part of you we were worried about, and now the rest of you is hanging. <laughs> your, your heart, my is, heart grand. is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking benjaxed. Yeah. <laughs> So that's good news, isn't it? That is excellent news. <laughs> yeah. We really should have started so I was the just show being an absolute that, drama queen. <laughs> with that life-changing news, <laughs> that should have been the headline. And like right at the end, we go, oh, Barry's heart's all right. See you, penguins. <laughs> See you all next week. Yeah. That's, uh, that is good news, though. Sure. All right. Party on. Party on. Party on, Glick. Meow, <laughs> meow.